The Call of Duty Modern Warfare recoil videos from Drifter and Exclusive Ace had a few small holes in them, and I'm going to fill those holes as well as show you exactly how to measure recoil for any gun and any set of attachments in the game right now. Hello and welcome, I am Amedeo602, and if this is your first time on the channel and you want to improve at Call of Duty, then start now by subscribing and ringing the notification bell so you don't miss out on tips, tricks, and tactics to make you a better player. Before we get started, I just want to give a big thank you to both Drifter and Exclusive Ace for all of their hard work and wonderful content over the years. The content from both of these creators is absolutely amazing, and I've followed both of them on YouTube for years. I started following Drifter back in the Black Ops 2 in-depth days, and I've been subscribed to the exclusive Ace ever since Call of Duty Ghosts. I just want to make sure everyone understands that this video is not an attack on them or their testing or anything like that, but I did notice three big omissions from videos that they've recently released regarding recoil in Modern Warfare. I feel like these are important enough topics that they should at least be mentioned. With all of that said, this is not meant to be a complete guide to recoil control in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, because both Drifter and Ace covered that topic quite well. For anyone who hasn't already seen at least one of those videos, here is a very brief introduction to recoil control. Before you fire your weapon, as you're aiming down the sights, there is a small amount of what we call idle sway. This is where your gun moves side to side in sort of a figure eight pattern. Once you begin firing, the idle sway is gone, and it is replaced by both horizontal and vertical recoil. In between shots, your gun attempts to recenter itself back to the initial point where you were aiming. This is called gun centering speed. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare, your idle sway is affected by the plus or minus aiming stability trait on the attachments. Your horizontal recoil is controlled by the recoil stabilization trait of the attachments. And we're not quite sure yet, but both Drifter and Ace seem to indicate that recoil control seemed to impact both vertical recoil as well as gun centering. The first point I want to bring up is mounting your weapon. Mounting your weapon has an absolutely insane impact on your recoil. If you're locking down a lane and expect to be in any sort of long range engagement, I'd highly recommend mounting your weapon if you can safely do so. In these tests on Gulag showers, you can see that when I'm mounted, I can easily land an entire magazine inside a very tight circle from all the way across the map. Mounting your weapon also stacks with any attachments that you have chosen for your weapon, so be sure to do that whenever you can. The second thing, and perhaps they both tested this and chose to omit it, was the optics attachment category. In previous Call of Duty games, optical attachments have had interesting, and in many cases very unexpected, impacts on recoil. Because there are a large number of optical attachments, I didn't go through and test each one. However, I did test several different optical attachments on the M4, and I was unable to see any difference in recoil in my tests. One possible exception would be the 4X sight, which may have had a minor impact and warrants more testing. One interesting thing to note was that I had not yet developed my method for objectively testing recoil when I was doing this, so as usual with science, more testing can always help. The final omission, and something I didn't even realize until I was several hours into my own testing, was that we actually can obtain objective data about recoil in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. To be fair, Ace mentioned in his video that he wasn't looking for exact data but rather trends, but in my opinion, if you have access to actual data, you should be using it. And to both of their credit, again, this is not something that I thought of when I watched their videos, but it was something that I just sort of happened into because I had chosen Gulag Showers. As I was about to finish out my testing, it occurred to me that most of Gulag Showers has bricks on the wall, and that all of these bricks are nearly identical. In fact, save for a few defaced bricks, they all appear to be the exact same height and width. When measuring data, you don't necessarily need to use units like meters and feet. Bricks or window panes are plenty. Now stick with me here because this is going to involve a little bit of math. When looking at the recoil, recall that there is a horizontal component as well as a vertical component. In the world of math, you can combine these two into something called a vector. Vectors have a length which tells you how much total recoil you have. Now of course, as both Ace and Drifter pointed out, 
Horizontal recoil tends to be more important to control in Call of Duty than vertical recoil, so you may wish to keep these components separate for your testing. If you choose to combine them and just compare the total length or magnitude of recoil, all you need to do is apply the formula on the screen. This formula may look very familiar to some of you, and it's more commonly known as the Pythagorean Theorem. You simply multiply the horizontal by itself, multiply the vertical by itself, add those two together, and then take the square root. This gives you the length or magnitude of your total recoil. In order to measure the magnitude of recoil for any weapon and any set of attachments in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, all you need to do is begin a private match on Gulag Showers. Select a place to stand and a wall to shoot at. Aim at a corner of bricks or window panes, and then fire as many rounds as you would like to for your own recoil test. Once you're done firing, simply count the number of bricks or window panes in both the horizontal and vertical direction. You can choose to either keep the horizontal and vertical components separate, or you can combine them using the Pythagorean theorem to calculate a total magnitude of recoil. You can then do this for other sets of attachments and find which ones you think will work best for you. One thing to note about Gulag showers is that if you stand on the far end at the doors and shoot at the far window panes, that your bullets may not actually be drawn on the screen. For that reason, I chose the half-court line of Gulag showers for most of my mid to long range testing. If you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to share it with your friends and leave a thumbs up because it really helps out the channel. If you're new around here and you want to improve at Call of Duty, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on my future videos. And as always, thank you very much for watching.